What's up guys? So it's been a minute. Uh, just hanging out in my backyard under my porch. So we'll call this, I don't know, we'll call this porch diaries or something. Uh, I wanted to, go to show you guys some pickups that I recently got. I wouldn't say recently, I'd say uh, for the past three months. Uh, but yeah, what's up guys? Uh, I know some of you probably think I'm out of the hobby or whatever, but nope. Still been buying, still been collecting, been going to shows. Uh, I just recently hit up this past weekend bourbon card uh, shop. Uh, I was in there for maybe an hour. Didn't buy anything. Um, it was good to see the store. I don't, I don't travel there. Or to that area too much uh, but great store as always um, there's been a lot of talk in the hobby so maybe after the these uh, the pickups that I show you I'll uh, I'll put my two cents in okay so what I wanted to show you guys is I picked up this 2022 Select UFC Matt Hughes Gold Prism Auto in a PSA 9. You guys see that? You guys can't see that. I will reflect it in a better mode. But guess how much I paid for this card? I paid 125. So how do you justify a card from a Hall of Famer, UFC Hall of Famer, uh, Gold Prism out of 10, right here, out of 10, PSA 9 for $125. To me, that's cheap. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below. Is Am I just going crazy or what I mean that's that's just so undervalued how much I paid for it <laughs> but anyway uh, here's my next card this is a 2012 tops chrome orange refractor of Bryce Harper in a PSA 10 these are not numbered but these are very short printed uh, so I love the it's kind of like a color match very cool card by PC Bryce, uh, he's he's off to a decent start this year. So let's just see if he can uh, make that run for MVP. Uh, going into football, I picked up this back in I want to say February actually. This is a 2019 flawless Kyler Murray signature gloves PSA nine. It's basically RPA. This is going to be out of 25. So this is a beautiful card. Check out that patch. Check out that patch, guys. That patch is so sick. You see the eye of the cardinal right there. Very cool card. I expect him to. Uh, I expect the season to be Kyler. So. I'm going to be on the lookout. Next card I picked up was this 2018 Panini 1 Dual Patch Auto Gold out of 10 of Saquon Barkley. This is going to be a PSA 9. Double Patch. Two color patch. Pretty cool. Out of 10. I think these Panini 1s are super undervalued I'm talking about super undervalued so uh, forgot how much I paid for this probably less than 200 but yeah another another card I think that is undervalued okay so my next couple of cars guys this it all goes back to um, my nostalgia and it kind of relates to the movie that's coming out this year, uh, Ghostbusters. 
If you haven't seen the previews, uh, it looks like a good movie. I am uh, I'm proud to say that I am a big fan of Ghostbusters. So before I show you guys these cards, I wanted to mention that you can find these cards. These are just like, you know, I guess you can say uh, were in the 90s where they were overprinted. Um, so you can find raw copies of these just anywhere. I mean, if you just, you know, type in eBay, uh, the set, they're, they're all over. However, there are very few of them uh, that are in high grade or even graded at all so the set is very condition sensitive and like I said it's hot it's very hard to get uh, high grades in these so I'm just going to go uh, top to bottom so this is coming from the 89 tops set Ghost of Ghostbusters 2. This is the most popular character out of the Ghostbusters series. Uh, Vinkman. Alright. This chick is toast. Downtown. Which is played by Bill Murray, and this is a PSA 9. You see that? PSA 9. And I want to say, when you, if you search this card, the same exact card in this grade, you might find one or two listings, if that. And um, I believe the guy or the seller on eBay currently is asking for. Uh, Anywhere, anywhere between 350 and 700 I, I think I did not pay that much for that card but just FYI here is the same card in a PSA 8 this is Vinkman even the PSA 8 is very rare to find and then we got Dan Aykroyd And a PSA 8. Um, I try to look for him. He's probably the second most popular uh, character. I try to look for him in a 9. I couldn't find any 9s. The 8 was the highest grade for him. And then... Here is Spangler. Do you have any hobbies? I collect spores, molds, and fungus. This is in a CGC 8.5. This one actually I had got shipped from Canada. The seller was based in Canada. 
Um, and it was the only one I could find. Graded. Like I said, I can find tons and tons of raw copies, but to find it graded, uh, very rare. And we have, last but not least, of uh, the four Ghostbusters is Winston. Do you believe in UFOs, astral projections, mental telepathy, ESP, clairvoyance, spirit photography, telekinetic movement, full trance mediums, the Loch Ness Monster, and the theory of Atlantis? Uh, if there's a steady paycheck in it, I'll believe anything you say. This is also in a, a CGC slab in a mid nine. The last one's 8.5. This one's in a nine. Turn it, turn it vertical for you guys. You guys see that? So that was cool. And then I have three more slabs. Here is Lewis. in a PSA 6 surprisingly there's no high grades for Lewis higher than a 6 so there you go and then here is Slimer In a PSA 9. Slimer should be a good guy in one of these series, you know? But he's often looked at as a bad guy. So that's in that PSA 9. And then my last slab in the Ghostbusters set is all four of them. This is kind of cool. It's, it's just, it mentions all four of them and uh, I'm Winston, I'm Egon, I'm Peter, I'm Ray, and we're the Ghostbusters. This is going to be in a PSA 8. See that? So, very glad on my pickups. Um, like I said, I'm still collecting. Um, so next show, guys, right? Next show that I am headed to is the Dallas show next month. Boom, right here. And um, <clears throat> I'm not going as a dealer. I'm not setting up or anything. I'm going to walk. So that should be fun. And then after that, in August, is the burping show. Right here, boom. So I'll also be walking around. Well, you know what, I haven't decided. Um, I could be setting up, but most likely I'll be just walking around. Um, so just kind of give you guys a background of, you know, I'm not a I'm not a full-time dealer. I just do this for fun, and I have a full-time job uh, that just keeps me very busy. Uh, but I produce content in the beginning just just for fun, and I kind of like uh, record my my journey into sports cars, I guess, uh, because this is my passion. So I enjoy it very much. Uh, the next topic I want to talk about is I'm seeing a lot of content being created on YouTube talking about repackers and um you know re repackers buying out dealers at, at card shows and stuff and you know my my two sentences of that is um you know it's not only repackers buying out dealers i actually i mean i i look forward to the repackers in buying out inventory i bet dealers do also uh, but it's also whatnot dealers so 
I've never been on a whatnot platform. I've never actually been interested in like looking into it, but you know, these whatnot dealers, you know, they'll buy out inventory. And the reason I say that is because they've bought out my inventory on several occasions, which I'm happy because day one, I'm a, most of my inventory is just sold. And I'm not, I'm not bringing these cards to flip or anything. I'm bringing these cards because I've collected over the years and I just want to move away from these cards and get into uh, higher cards, okay? Uh, right now, my inventory <laughs> is not that great. I do have some cards, but my last show in Del Mar, um, a couple of whatnot dealers brought, bought out most of my inventory. So now I have to kind of... Um, Get, either get some inventory or move away from some other cards. But I'll make that decision later. I'm not in a rush. But going back to the repackers. So I would say, you know, the re between the repackers and the whatnot dealers, you know, they're making the, um, and they're, by the way, they're paying really good uh, prices for these cards, you know, either at comps or really near comps. So I agree with the content that's being, um, published saying that they pay strong and so I definitely could confirm that um, but yeah it's like they make um, they make the industry kind of flow you know so I don't really necessarily necessarily see it as a bad thing you know especially you know if repackers are doing this you can't blame the repackers you gotta you know if you're mad about uh, just repacking at all then don't buy don't buy their repacks and the only people you should blame when it comes to repacks is the people that are paying them so if the people that are paying them are getting mad and and and, and everything you, they should be blamed okay so stop stop buying repacks it's simple as that it's really not that hard the repackers know what's going in in the repacks uh, the people buying them have no idea, but most likely they know they're not, they're probably, the chances of getting their money back or more are very slim, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that, but if you don't like it, then don't buy the repack. Simple as that. Um, other than that, you know, the Kurtz card care, I've been hearing that a lot about on YouTube. You know, people have their own opinions. Right now, I don't have my own opinion about that. Um, probably be in my next video, but Kurt's Card Care, I, I don't have any comments right now, so I can't say it's good or bad. But I will. I probably should make a video about it, which I will. Uh, hopefully, I will. But other than that, guys, I think that's it. Just wanted to share some cards, put my two cents in about some things in the industry. And, um, you know, I will hopefully see you guys or make contact for you guys in the next show. Or uh, just create another back porch uh, diary video. Okay? Hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Peace.